Hello friends, Nick here for Daily Hope. Now I'm part of the Mission and Community Impact team, but so are all of you. Church, I want to commend you for the way that you've been living right now at this time. You've been loving on your neighbours and your family and all those around you. You've been sharing words of hope. You've been outreaching to them. You've been caring for those in need. We're going to come back to that as we end. Today, we're in Deuteronomy 23. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's a hard chapter of the Bible to get your head around as a New Testament Christian to read it and to think, how does that apply to us? I was reading it with my 12-year-old son and he's like, Dad, it seems kind of unreasonable. There's all these rules and some of them don't even seem fair. And I said to him, of course, as all of us parents say, well, isn't it good that life isn't fair? Because otherwise God wouldn't love us. But we know God as a God of mercy and grace and kindness. In the passage, keep in mind it's in the Old Testament, before the work of Christ, it talks about those who are excluded from the sacred assembly, those who are in fact excluded from coming before God in worship. And it, it talks about those who were eunuchs, the pagan religions of the time. Sometimes people would make themselves eunuchs or they would be made so by others. It, it talks about those who were from uh, illegitimate marriages, the children of that. It talks about certain ethnic groups. It talks even about men who had nocturnal emissions. They had to go outside the camp and get clean and come back. Now, it doesn't seem fair, does it, to us? But as we read the Bible with cross eyes, through the lens of the saving work of Jesus, who died on the cross for us and set us free from the law of sin and death, it's a reminder that God exists in unapproachable light. He's perfect. As Jesus said in Matthew 5, 48, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Now that, that's a problem for me because I'm not perfect and some of you out there feel the same. But it's actually great when we think about it in the light of the work of Christ. It's a reminder to us that though we fall short through our sins and the sins that are done to us that we even had no part in, but we have, we have pulled up short of the glory of God. The second half of the chapter starts to get a lot more directly applicable to us. It talks about not oppressing people. And specifically, it talks about those who are runaway slaves, those who are seeking refuge, foreigners likely who come into your land. You're to care for them. You're to embrace them. You're to care for them. And church, you have been doing that through our refugee care ministries. You know the amount of people who have been brought close to Christ and even into relationship with Christ through that ministry is mind boggling. It's been wonderful. It says you're to take them in. It also speaks against this awful practice of the day uh, called shrine prostitution, where people would come into pagan temples and they would have sex with shrine prostitutes as a kind of a, an act of prayer, so it were, to the gods. A most evil practice. Can you imagine the oppression? Can you imagine those most often kids who were sold into that life? How awful that is. Friends, we've been working with anti-human trafficking collaboratives and, and amazing work's been going on. You've been doing that. It also speaks against usury or charging people interest, pounding them down with weights that they cannot bear. The first principle is don't oppress people. Fight against oppression. The second principle is to be people of our word. It talks about vows made to the Lord. You know, we can say these things to God, we can sing these things to God, but if there's a dissonance between that and our lives, then we're, it's kind of undercutting the vow that we've made before the Lord. And the last thing that it talks about is helping give people a hand up. Not a hand out, but a hand up. As, the, as Deuteronomy 23 ends, it says, if, if you're walking through a grain field or, or a vineyard, you're allowed to pick some of the grapes and pick some of the grain. You're not allowed to do it with a basket or a sickle. No, that would be stealing. But you're allowed to help yourselves. We are to help others help themselves. And friends, you have been doing that. I've been seeing what's been happening with the outpouring of love and kindness and compassion through our emergency relief fund and the benevolence work that's been going on there, through all the ways that you've been making us aware of the needs in our community and we've been combining together to meet those needs, through the food drives that have been happening, through the, the school supply drives that have been happening. Friends, you are doing an amazing work. I just want to commend you to keep on going. 
So my prayer for you today is that you would be someone who notices and fights against oppression in all of its forms. That you and me, that we would be people of our word. People can trust us. Our word is faithful and true. And lastly, that we would be people who would be continuing to give people a hand up. Not a hand out indiscriminately, but helping them to help themselves that they in turn can help others. Friends, this is the work of Christ and it's great to be doing it together. I look forward to seeing you this weekend at services, whether it's online or in person. We love you, friends, and we miss you. Take care.